What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael here from Fudge Muppet bringing you another highly requested build for Fallout 4. He's called the Swatter and he's obsessed with baseball. He once played professionally, however in the wasteland the only home runs he'll be scoring are with other people's heads. Many of you would have seen this build in action in our Let's Play of it and if you haven't seen it the link is on screen. We're going to be Let's Playing an episode of all our builds before they release just like we did with this build and the tribal build so be sure to stay tuned. We're even doing episodes with previous builds too. The Swatter is an incredibly speedy character and will zip around the battlefield protected by the moving target perk of course and do tons of damage and save even more AP with Blitz and Action Boy. The Swatter was always the king of the bat however he will also use grenades to represent his pitching skill. He wasn't known for his pitching, but to the common grenade throwing radar, his skills are still extraordinary. We've chosen to use lots of baseball grenades to keep with the theme. Speaking of keeping with the theme, here at Fudge Muppet, we've been giving away a lot of season passes lately, and this week we're going to be giving away another 10. We'll be giving half of these away at random to five people who join our communities on IMSI, and if you don't know what IMSI is, it's basically an awesome community-based site that's currently in beta. We've got a Fudge Muppet community, a Fallout 1, and an Elder Scrolls 1, so do stop by if you're interested in having a chat with us, and also, of course, in winning some season passes. The other five passes will be awarded to whoever can show us the best creation they can make with the Wasteland Workshop DLC. You'll have to make a video and upload it to YouTube, and then post the link for the video in the official competition thread, and remember, only the five best videos win. The community links are in the description, and good luck to everyone who participates. This build won't be using any power armor and to make him look the best he won't be using any of the other baseball gear in the game if you want to wear the blue batting helmet or the diamond city gear you can but we recommend this aesthetic we'll use ballistic weave so don't worry about low resistances the swatter is definitely a great build for causing mayhem and if you need to blow off some steam then a playthrough with this character can really help do remember that Scott and I have put timestamp links in the description box to help you navigate throughout this video. If you want to skip a section or go back to somewhere to get information, those will help you out a lot. Now let's get into the Swatter's backstory. Born in a poorer area of Boston, the Swatter grew up in a low-income family with parents who had just inherited a small sum of cash. His parents were both incredibly unintelligent by nature, and these genetics were passed on to him. He wasn't smart, and he was well aware of this, but being so dumb, it was hard for him to tell just how slow he was. That said, brains obviously weren't of high value in his household, and he was happy simply living a life filled with more patriotic values. The Swatter loved his country, he appreciated freedom, and he really admired what his nation could achieve, even if he didn't understand any of it. The one thing the Swatter always did understand was baseball, and in his eyes this was one of America's greatest inventions, even if that's debatable. He enjoyed the fact that something as simple as a game could bring pleasure to millions of people. He was one of these people, however he loved to play baseball, not just watch it. Luckily for him, the Swatter lived next to a sandlot and it was here he would play baseball with the other kids in the neighborhood. This sport was all the Swatter cared about and the Red Sox were his favorite team. He hoped to one day join their ranks and he spent his entire upbringing with this one goal in mind. He constantly played baseball, and while he wasn't the best at making friends during schooling, he was adored by everyone because of his skill and dedication. To the Swatter, America really is the land of opportunity, and he truly believed that he could become a professional baseball player if he tried hard enough. To his delight, this is exactly what ended up happening. By the time he was 17, he was competing at the highest tier of elite young players, and as he finally grew into an adult, he was scooped up by a talent scout and groomed to become a member of his favorite team, the Red Sox. As the years went by and the Swatter became the best batter on his team, he became incredibly famous and incredibly wealthy. He gave most of his money to his family back home and continued to play mainly for the love of the game. He loved being on the front cover of all the newspapers and the main story on every sports TV show. For the next two years, the Swatter lived a super exciting lifestyle until eventually his dreams were ruined and he lost everything he ever wanted. No, I'm not talking about nuclear annihilation yet, I'm talking about being busted for illegal drug use. In those two years before he was kicked out, the Swatter had become very conscious about his health. He didn't understand why having good food was so advantageous, however he'd been told of the benefits and was seeing improvements in his performance by eating very healthily. He even used basic supplements like whey protein and multivitamins to help him fulfill his daily nutrition requirements. Eventually, however, a sports professional who had been sent over by another baseball club decided to give the Swatter some steroids. 
He told him it was just another supplement, and because of his low intelligence, the swatter was none the wiser. This cruel trick saw him exiled from his team, and over time, he became very miserable and a lot darker. He would go to every Red Sox game and cheer desperately from the sidelines, hoping his team would take him back and respect him once again. He wouldn't be allowed to join anyway, but that didn't stop him from acting strangely and following them everywhere. This continued for a few months as the Swatter became continually upset, and feeling reckless and slightly suicidal, he decided to join the military and just see what happened. Within the military, the Swatter did fairly well because of his high level of fitness, however he didn't really become anyone important due to his lack of tactical thinking and brain power. Funnily enough, even having killed during his military career, the dark thoughts the Swatter had before he joined seemed to slowly start fading away. The military was almost like rehab and he was able to learn new skills and make new friends as he got over his massive loss. After his service, the Swatter returned home as a more mature man. He still wasn't smart and he still wished he was a professional baseball player, but to an extent he had made peace with his life experiences. After returning to his family, the Swatter decides to go back to the sandlot where he used to practice as a child. He brings his baseball gear to have a few practice swings, and funnily enough, he meets one of the children he used to play with. A fully grown woman now, sitting on her lonesome, playing her guitar and singing a peaceful tune. He went over to greet her, and after reuniting and getting on pretty well, the two began dating and married a year later. They then had a child and settled down in their very own home, using the money that the Swatter had earned. They lived happily together until the bombs began to fall and the Swatter was rushed into the vault. Before the factions and motive sections of this video begins, do be warned that I will be talking about factions you can join in the game. If you don't want to know about these factions, you can skip this part using the timestamp links. With that out of the way, let's get to it. After leaving the vault, the Swatter again finds himself torn from a place he wanted to be. Again, he becomes dark, but soldiers on, knowing that hope and freedom are still out there, waiting to be rediscovered. It's not long before he discovers the Minutemen and decides to help them as they are seeking to promote freedom and create prosperity for all settlers of the wasteland. He also has no other people around to talk to and is happy to socialize for the first time in many, many years. Eventually, as he continues through the wasteland, he goes to Diamond City and discovers that his favorite passion has survived. He puts on some baseball gear, gets himself a baseball bat, and travels onwards feeling safer than he ever assumed possible. It was quite a big deal to put on a baseball uniform after being away from it for so long, however, it gave him great confidence. The Swatter will continue to help the Minutemen, and after meeting the Railroad, he will be very intrigued by their cause and their skills. While he is on the journey to develop a better headspace, the Swatter still has rage inside of him, and he wants to be able to release it sometimes, but for the right reasons. The Swatter can ultimately side with the Railroad while helping the Minutemen on the side, or he can side with the Minutemen while helping the Railroad. He knows that the Minutemen can ensure freedom for a large amount of people, and by working with the Railroad as well, he can also gain freedom for synths. However, you're not going to gain the most freedom for synths unless you ultimately side with the Railroad. He considers that cause to be pretty noble and isn't smart enough to think of other alternatives. He'll also be amazed that American technology was able to create freedom within the minds of robots. He despises dictatorships and will not like the cause of the Brotherhood of Steel. While seeking out his son, the Swatter will lend a hand when he can, especially if that means he gets to swing around his bat. The Swatter will swing his way into the Wasteland with 8 Strength, 3 Perception, 5 Endurance, 1 Charisma, 1 Intelligence, 9 Agility, and 1 Luck. The special book in Sanctuary will be used on Perception, and after getting the Perception Bubblehead shortly after, you will gain access to Demolition Expert. This will help out with those sneaky baseball grenades. Obviously, by looking at the stats of the Swatter, we can really see what kind of person he is. He's not smart, he can't talk in a convincing way, and his life success had nothing to do with luck. If anything, he had a lot of skill and a big lack of luck. His lack of perception has occurred due to the Vault 111 technology, and his endurance, strength, and agility represents his extreme level of physical conditioning. Agility will allow us to sprint non-stop and give us access to perks which enhance our VAT's playstyle, and endurance will simply help the Swatter stay alive. Strength will allow him to swing his bat very hard and score some savage home runs, and it will also allow him to enhance the durability of his uniform with the armor perk. Now let's go through the perk choices for the Swatter all the way up to level 50. You can change perks around if you'd like to, however, this is what we've chosen. 
At level 2, we're going with the first rank of big leagues for 20% more melee damage, and following this, we're getting Blitz. Blitz will allow us to use melee attacks from really far away in VATS, and after this, we're getting the first rank of Demolition Expert. This will make our explosives do 25% more damage, and in combination with the first two perk choices, it's clear that we've now established the foundation for playing this build. Following this, we're getting the first rank of Blacksmith, and this will help us start upgrading any melee weapon we find or buy. Action Boy is chosen next to make action points regenerate 25% faster, and then we're getting the second rank of Big Leagues. At this rank, melee weapons will do 40% more damage, and the Swatter will gain a chance to disarm his opponent with his bat. This build uses a very VATS intensive playstyle, however, he's also going to dabble in luck. So over the next four levels, that's level 8, 9, 10, and 11, a perk point will be put into luck. This will give us access to the Idiot Savant perk, which will be chosen at levels 12 and 13. This will help counter the low intelligence of this build so you can level a lot faster. Now you'll have a chance to randomly receive 5 times as much XP from any action, and the lower intelligence you have, the greater the chance. That said, we will still be getting the intelligence bobblehead so that we can get the medic perk, but that comes later on. At level 14, we're getting the second rank of demo expert, and now our baseball grenades will do 50% more damage and they'll gain a throwing arc. This is great for representing the pitching ability of this build, as it'll allow the Swatter to accurately throw his grenades through windows and place them perfectly behind various cover. We then get the third rank of Big Leagues to dish out 60% more melee weapon damage, and now the chance to disarm targets is even bigger. We then get the second rank of Blacksmith, and that is all the Swatter needs to make his baseball bat the best. Speaking of crafting perks, we're going to be getting two ranks of armor in a row now, and this has been chosen so that we can make the most of Ballistic Weave. Around this stage in the game, you should be able to get it. We're then going to be getting the moving target perk, and this perk complements the Swatter tremendously. Now while sprinting, you'll enjoy plus 25 damage and energy resistance, and this is great for all the fast movement of this build. However, while you're using Blitz, you plant your feet in the ground and stand still before you use your Vats attack. Because of this, we're going to be getting Rooted next. This will make you cause 25% more melee damage while standing still, and have plus 25 damage resistance. Keep in mind that you'll need this Strength Bobblehead for this. At level 21, we're putting a perk point into luck, and now we've done all the luck allocation for this build. All you'll need extra later on is the luck bobblehead. We want high luck for the great luck perks we'll be choosing. At level 22, we get the second rank of rooted, and we're not going to be getting the third rank. The second rank gives you plus 50 damage resistance, and makes you cause 50% more melee damage all while standing still. Again, this is great with Blitz. We're then getting Demolition Expert 3, making explosives affect a larger area and cause 75% more damage. The second rank of moving target is then chosen at level 24, giving the Swatter plus 50 energy and damage resistance while he sprints around the battlefield. Next is Armor 3, allowing you to take your Ballistic Weave to the next level. Action Boy 2 is then picked to make action points regenerate 50% faster. This will be incredibly useful for having more action points available for combat. Now speaking of combat, the Swatter will cause 80% more damage with his bat when he then gets the 4th rank of Big Leagues. Big Leagues 4 also lets you hit all the targets in front of you with one swipe. Have fun hitting home runs with multiple heads at once. Bloody Mess is chosen next so we can make enemies explode into a bloody paste, and also so we can do 5% more damage with everything. The Swatter then evolves to a whole new level with Blitz Rank 2. This is the rank that increases your damage the further away you are from your Blitz target, and it also gives you more Blitz range in general. This really does make this build a lot more fun than it already was, and a lot more effective. Finally, at level 30, we're going with the second rank of Bloody Mess, making the Swatter do 10% more damage in general. At level 31, we're going with Bloody Mess again, making this build do 15% additional damage, and this is the last rank we're getting of this perk. Another luck perk is then introduced, known as Better Criticals, and two ranks of this will be chosen in a row. This will make the Swatter's critical hits do twice as much extra damage, and because of our higher luck and very high agility, we'll be able to use critical hits all the time. We then get the final rank of Demolitions Expert, causing our grenades to do double damage. Later on in the game, our bat 
that will actually become a lot more powerful, but grenades definitely still come in handy to solve a variety of problems. At levels 35 and 36, we're investing in endurance to tank this build up, and then sticking with that strategy, we've chosen to get two ranks of adamantium skeleton. These ranks are chosen over levels 37 and 38, and this will make this build take 60% less limb damage. This is great for when you start running into more explosive, higher damage enemies. The SWAT will then become further fortified with the final rank of armor, and this will allow you to ballistic weave your baseball outfit to have the best resistances available. The final rank of better criticals is chosen at level 40, and this rank makes criticals do two and a half times as much extra damage. It's pretty obvious why that's a good thing. Adamantium Skeleton is then finished off at level 41, so you take no limb damage at all, and then Big Leagues 5 comes into play at level 42. At this rank, not only will you cause double damage with melee weapons and have a chance to disarm your target, but you'll also gain a chance to cripple your opponent or grand slam their head clean off. This final rank really enhances the baseball atmosphere of this build, and it's a whole lot of fun to hear the crowd cheer as you hit heads off into the distance. The Luck Bobblehead will be required next as the Swatter is going to start investing in Critical Banker. This perk is fantastic, but we didn't feel it was a priority as the high agility of this build will see him unleashing crits all the time anyway. That said, now you'll be able to store up an additional one. At level 44, the Swatter finishes off the moving target perk, making sprinting cost 50% fewer action points, and then he gets the last two ranks of Critical Banker. Now you'll be able to store up four critical hits, including the normal critical bar. These can all be used to decimate one large dangerous threat or multiple threats in quick succession. Blitz, plus lots of VATS usage, plus lots of criticals, powerful ones at that, equals a whole lot of slaughter. We then invest a perk point into strength, giving us 10% more melee damage and 10 strength if we've got the bubble head, and then we chuck a point into endurance. This will help increase our health even more, and it's definitely more useful at this later stage in your playthrough. The Swatter finishes off with two ranks of Medic, and now at this high level, in combination with Endurance, he's basically unstoppable. Two ranks of Medic will make Stimpaks restore 60% of your max HP, and right away will remove 60% of your max potential radiation. The endgame special stats for the Swatter, not including gear, but including the stat allocation and all the bobbleheads are as follows. 10 Strength, 5 Perception, 9 Endurance, 2 Charisma, 2 Intelligence, 10 Agility, and 7 Luck. Gear for this build is quite simple. In terms of clothing, you're going to want to wear the baseball uniform and the baseball cap. If you want some DC guard armor, you can use it. However, we thought the build looked a lot better without it. You will want to upgrade your baseball uniform with Ballistic Weave over time as your armor perk advances, and this outfit also has some handy stat advantages. The uniform piece will give you plus one strength and plus one agility, and the cap will give you plus one perception. Alongside this gear, we're also going to be using grenades. Fitting in with the baseball theme, we've chosen to go with baseball grenades, and these will be great for crowd controlling with area damage. They'll be most useful in the first half of your playthrough, as later on your baseball bat becomes incredibly powerful. In the late game, they can still be used, and one of the best things to throw them at is enemy turrets. Explosive turrets do a lot of damage, but they're not hard to kill. Grenades are a nice ranged attack to have, and you can definitely use a variety of types. Looking at the baseball bat, it is none other than the Rockville Slugger. This hardy bat is a legendary weapon that costs a massive 40% less action points to use. This makes it beast for streaming blitz kills all around the battlefield, and you'll want to fully max it out with all the modifications you can for the highest damage possible. This will make it end up aluminium or aluminum for all you Americans and be bladed. You can buy this bat from the baseball shop in Diamond City, so start saving up early. Before getting this weapon, you can use whatever normal baseball bats you find, or other preferred melee weapons. Another end game weapon you may also want to play with is the 2076 World Series Baseball Bat. This legendary bat has a chance of sending enemies flying upon contact, however it doesn't work as well with Blitz as the Rockville Slugger does. We'll leave a link in the description if you want to know how to get this legendary baseball bat. Now that you know all the gear the Swatter will use, let's talk about companions. We've decided that Codsworth would be a great choice for this build as he can be considered a symbol of the great level of technology America was able to acquire. A feat that the Swatter is very proud of. Preston Garvey can also be another good choice for this build as the Swatter will lend the Minutemen a hand and he does value freedom greatly. Nick Valentine can also work well as can Piper. 
Piper can be a nice romantic interest to have, and we think the very American journalist vibe fits pretty well with the swatter. After all, he was always on the front cover of the newspaper. Do keep in mind that great mentats will help a lot when you try to romance anyone with this build. The Swatter has never really been into settlement building, however he can lend a hand to build basic infrastructure if he feels like he needs to. That said, he doesn't have much knowledge when it comes to construction and he prefers to focus more on defending settlements. He aims to be that incredibly fast ally who can use his speed to literally appear to save the day at only a minute's notice. And that wraps up another highly requested build on Fudge Muppet, the Swatter. Be sure to subscribe for more Fallout 4 builds and do follow us on Snapchat and join our communities on MZ. Thanks for tuning into our channel and be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and I hope you did. My name is Michael, social media links are in the description and I look forward to nerding out with you all again very soon.